Hi, this is Gail with Burning of Naperville and welcome to month two of our vintage boardwalk embroidery extravaganza. So by the post that we saw on our Bernina of Naperville Embroiderers group, it looks like you are having a lot of fun already doing the swimsuits and the swim trunks and the life preservers, but you're gonna love this month because we're actually gonna make chenille in the hoop. So chenille is actually a bunch of layers of fabric typically. They're stitched on the bias and by stitching straight lines on the bias and then slashing through those straight lines, you get these channels and then you just fluff them right up. So the cotton candy and the um, palm trees are done just that way. Now I've done some other things like this on my own and uh, we have another separate video for chenille on that coming up. So please stay tuned and subscribe to get that information. But let's um, go ahead and have a look here at the pattern, the vintage boardwalk pattern. So we are making palm trees, cotton candy, and seagulls. And we're actually going to do our seagulls and piece them. Even though typically we're not piecing anything yet until we get further along in this project, but it just seems to work well. We're going to make two seagulls, we're going to cut all the material to put them on the pier and assemble those. But the palm trees and the cotton candy, we're actually just going to stitch and we're not even going to trim the blocks down quite yet. Now, another thing that's a little bit different than last time is the palm trees. For those of you that might have an actual um, machine that doesn't really go as large as some of the hoops that we use here on our seven and our eight series machines, you are gonna be able to do this in a two hooping. And I'm gonna do that one first and then show you how easy it is if you just do the one hooper. Finally, <laughs> you're gonna love this. So those of you that have a five series and you're looking for a larger hoop, or maybe you have a seven series and you haven't splurged on the maxi or the midi hoop yet, we are actually selling our some select Bernina accessories online right now, and we can even ship those direct to you. So if you're looking for a hoop or a foot or something that you need Bernina wise, please consider us. We have full e-commerce capabilities on our website. All right, enough about this. Let's move on and get started on this lesson. In your kit, you have a lot of different fabrics that you could use for the background. Uh, these are gonna be for our palm trees. So for the palm tree, I decided I wanted to go with this um, orangey striped lighter background. And then this is our green, and you are gonna need four five inch squares of this according to the pattern. And um, this is our grunge brown that's in your kit. And you can see here that it's kind of got this muddled look here. You're gonna use this for the seagull piers, but you're also gonna use the reverse side isn't that sneaky for our palm tree base. So our palm trees are gonna go here and then like that. So let's go ahead and make a palm tree. Have you ever wanted to properly mark your stabilizers because sometimes it's hard to tell which stabilizer is what, like for this month's project? So the stabilizer that I'm gonna feature this month is actually Stable Stick Tearaway. And Nifty Notions creates these little slap bracelet type things to mark your stabilizers. Now you can go with the pre-printed ones for your basics, but they also have ones that you can write yourself. And I use a lot of Stable Stick Tearaway and Stable Stick Cutaway, and they happen to look exactly alike when you're hunting for them. So I went ahead and marked them. Here's our story of two hoops. Here on the right, we have the Bernina Maxi hoop. And then on the left, we have the MIDI hoop. So if you are working with a seven or an eight series machine, you can use the Mega, Maxi, or Jumbo hoop. If you're working with the five series machine, you can do a two hooper with the MIDI hoop or a one hooper with the Mega hoop. And here's the mega hoop right here. You can see here that this one's pretty long, but it's a little narrower than the midi hoop. I'm not gonna use this one. I'm gonna show you how to do our palm trees making one on our maxi hoop and one with a two hooper on the midi hoop. Okay, so I picked my design. This is the bottom part of the trunk here. And I am, I have moved this into my hoop as far as I can go without getting the red lines. 
and you can see here when I move it, see how those lines get red there? I'm just moving it as far down as possible like that. And then I'm very confident that this is in the center. Don't forget that also your pieces that you've cut, the six and a half inches by 14 and a half is a generous measurement. We're actually gonna trim it down to 12 and a half inches. So we have a little bit of wiggle room. So our piece is ready to stitch. I have a brown thread loaded up in my machine because that's gonna match my tree trunk. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch color number one. Now my next color that's stitching out is a basting stitch, and this is gonna prevent some puckering. So I but the Stable Stick Stabilizer has done a really good job of holding my fabric into place so it's not wiggling while I'm making my initial stitches. All right, now's the fun part. This is gonna be the um, placement stitch for my tree trunk. So now I'm just going to place the tree trunk fabric into position and notice that I'm using my wrong side of my grunge fabric like I mentioned. trim and I'm going to use my trusted Karen K Buckley curve serrated scissors and I'm going to trim really close to my tree trunk. Now these last few stitches right here are little reference points so when we rehoop we know exactly where we need to line up our palm tree greenery. It's a really a great way to make sure that we're lining the top of our palm tree up in just the right spot. There is no need to do this if you're able to do your palm tree in one hoop, like the mega hoop and the maxi hoop. And I do wanna make a special announcement. October is the first month that we are allowed to sell hoops directly on our Bernina of Naperville website. So there you can purchase a midi, a maxi, or a mega hoop. Okay, so our little basting stitches, I'm just gonna go over here and use my move around tools right on my machine to lower my presser foot and move my little spots here. And then I'm just gonna make sure that they're both in the same vicinity. All right, that looks great. And now I'm ready to stitch and do my placement stitch. Now when you're 
instructions, you were to cut four of these. Well, you're gonna take one right now and place right on top of your palm tree design, just like this. But then we're gonna do something really special. But first we just need to put our palm leaf base. All right, it's time to trim around just like we did with our tree trunk. I trimmed it and you blinked and you missed it. <laughs> now we have to do some decorative stitching around the palms. So here's our little decorative stitch that just stitched out and um, it's really kind of a nondescript little textury edge but now is where the magic happens. So I'm going to take the rest of these pieces and they go right side up just like this making sure we cover all of those pieces. And then I'm just gonna stitch the next color. And this is our last color. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a much longer stitch this time on our palm leaves. That's because eventually we're gonna aim to be cutting that stitching out. But now we have triple stitch straight stitches. And this is where we're gonna do some magic because we're making chenille palm tree leaves. But first, I need to go ahead and around this basting stitch which is the shape of my palm tree leaves I need to cut all three layers of this material. Just like that. And so this is going to take me a little bit to get all the way around here. So I'll meet you back here when I'm done with the palm leaves. Okay, so we're gonna pop this guy out of the hoop and use this weird looking rotary cutter. So this is actually a slash cutter from Clover. We have these here at the store, of course, and that's how I am gonna cut the chenille pieces of our palm tree. Okay, so the little slash cutter creates a little tongue that's gonna be wedged in here to cut through all of these different layers. Here we go. There we go. Ta-da, ta-da. Floppy, floppy. like this. Make sure you get all three layers. Okay, I think that's as good as we're gonna get. And now I like to take some sort of brush or something and just rough this up really well.
and sometimes I miss them and then when you rough them up this is how you find it when it's not blooming that's what I that's what we call it when your chenille starts to fuzz up it's blooming Sometimes it helps too if you get it a little damp. But there it is. So now I'm just gonna take the rest of my rags here and take those off. I'm gonna peel my stabilizer away and then I'm gonna use the rest of my stabilizer like a lint brush. Trimmed all my stabilizer away, or tore it away rather, and I have like all this sticky stuff here, so I can just use this to get all of my fuzzy wuzzies that have come loose off of my palm tree. But look at that cute guy. Now, I'm saving my pieces, and I'm actually going to trim them up right before I'm piecing everything together. So you can trim yours according to the instructions in the pattern, or you can just leave them for another time. Okay, so when you're doing your palm tree and you have the mega or the maxi or the jumbo hoop, all you need to do is hoop your stable stick tearaway stabilizer with the paper still on, shiny side of the paper up, and you're gonna use your scissors or a pin to score around here. I just take my scissors and just make a little faint pressure here. To get that out, peel, all right, so now we're ready to put our fabric on. But I'm going to take this over to the machine first, leaving just the stabilizer, then I'm going to pick the full palm tree design and show you what to do next. All right, I'm just going to go closer to the end is where our finished palm tree is, the whole bit like this. So now I'm ready to just stitch this out. So I'm going to attach my hoop. And then I'm going to go ahead and get ready to stitch it out. Now, stitch number one is actually a basting stitch. So that's going to tell me exactly where I need to place my material. just going to line it up right there, stick it on my stable stick, and just like with our two-piece palm tree, we are going to stitch a basting stitch. And I'm using my green thread, but I have to remember to change when we get to that brown cover stitch. All right, so now is the tack down stitch to show me where to put my brown tree trunk. All right, now I'm just gonna follow all the prompts. I'm gonna change my thread to brown and finish my tree trunk and then also follow the steps for the palm tree top just like I did for the two piece design. All right, there's our beautiful palm trees. And you know, it was really easy. The cutting is just the most laborious part, but it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna put these aside. Remember, I'm not gonna trim these until we're ready to piece our blocks together, which is gonna come later on in this series. So, but if you wanna go ahead and trim them, you can follow the instructions in the vintage boardwalk pattern. Now, we're going to grab our large oval hoop because this is what we're gonna use for our cotton candy. Now, from the magic of video, I am going to hoop my stable stick stabilizer paper side up and then score it.
For our cotton candy, I've used this gingham. Now, this might look like a weird choice for cotton candy, but I'm hoping that when the stitch is out, it has more of a look of pink because of the red and white, because we're gonna create a chenille effect like we did with the palm trees. And this is a homespun, and homespuns tend to unravel a little bit than our regular quilting cotton. Then I've just got this simple polka dot for the background, and I think that's it. So let's give it a try. The paper shiny side is the stuff that you're gonna peel, just like we did with our palm trees. So now I'm gonna grab a piece of this and just expose this so that it's sticky and I can put the background for my cotton candy in there. So I'm using this polka dotted material. I used this for the swimsuits last month. I think it's cute. I like it. And uh, now I am going to take this over to my machine. And this time I have to engage basting because there's no basting function engaged in these files. So let's go over to the machine. The hoop is on and you can see here, it wants to just start doing the stem and then the cotton candy. But like we did last month, we're gonna engage this basting feature and we just wanna sew our cotton candy background into place so we get the least amount of puckers as possible. And I'm using brown thread so that you can see the basting line, but also because that's the color I'm gonna stitch my popsicle stick or my cotton candy stick in. And now I can just skip ahead to stitching color number one. Okay, now we're ready to do the placement stitch for the cotton candy. And just like our palm tree, we're gonna start out with one layer of what our chenille base is gonna be. And I'm gonna change my thread color to pink for this. Now it's time to do that close little trimming. So I'm just gonna use the scissors again and trim just like we did the palm trees. I trimmed and now we're gonna stitch again. This time it's doing this little star type stitch just to add a little texture to the edge. Now it's time to put the other three layers of our gingham homespun on. And I'm just gonna line that up on top of my other cotton candy piece and stitch color number six. All right, you can see the little lines here and that little basting stitch. So if you wanna be careful, you're gonna trim each layer individually. So I'm gonna go in here. And trim just like this. You could try, if you, if you want, you can do all three together. Just let me just show you. It's a little challenging. It feels like you're cutting, you know, through Peltex or something because the fabric can be a little thick feeling, but you can do it. I think with the palm tree, it was easier to do three layers because of all the points on the palm tree. But this one, it's, it's kind of easier to do all three together. So just however you want to do it.
And now it's time to bring back our slash cutter. So all we do is slip it under those three layers and let's get the best angle for you here and cut. It was so fast. You blinked, didn't you? Okay, let's do it again. Here we go. Ta-da. It's easier to do when you push down on a surface like this, but doo -doo -doo -doo. there it goes. Look at that. The amazing slash cutter. And I'm just checking to make sure I got all layers, which I did. And then just like before, I just take a little bit of my already pulled off, cut off fabric. And now I'm just gonna try to rough up the chenille or to make the chenille. I'm roughing up these raw edges using my fingernails. Sandpaper also works. I bet you that if Camilla licked on this a little bit, it would also work, but let's not give her any ideas. Now this cotton candy, it looks a little bit like strawberry. Don't you think that this would be strawberry flavored cotton candy? Can you have flavored cotton candy? I don't know. I never really had it as a kid. I wasn't allowed to have it. It was too messy. All right, here's to cotton candy now. You have to have two of these. So you just have to do this one more time and then you're set. You can change your fabrics, you can change the background. So this little easy number is gonna be seagull number two. Now there's two seagulls and there's two different files. There's seagull number one and seagull number two. One faces right and one faces left. So you go number two, it faces left and is a little larger. Now with this particular block, you are going to make the seagulls, but then ultimately when you sew the quilt together, there are, there are going to be other pieces for the pier. So I'm going to give you your cutting instructions for your brown pier fabric and your background for whatever you used for the seagull. But let's go over to the sewing machine right now so that we can stitch a seagull out. Okay, so here's our seagull and just a little housekeeping. When you hoop up your stabilizer, the uh, file for the seagull has you stitch just on the stabilizer a placement line for your background fabric. Then you stitch your background fabric down to your stabilizer. So I've already done that and I've already stitched out his duck bill and his feet. So the next color is gonna be the placement stitch for the actual seagull fabric white part of the seagull and I'm using just a scrap of white from my bin and I'm going to change my thread to white. Magically, we trimmed, and now the funnest part of this design is the little foo-foo head that this next step gives our seagull. Now, this is gonna be something really fun because this is actually stitching a tassel-like creation. So what's gonna happen is it stitches its little foo-foo head here, and then it's gonna do a tack-down stitch and whatever, but then when we're all done, we're gonna cut the thread away from the back so that he has a little poof up there. Okay, we're just putting 
putting the finishing touches on our seagull and then we can take it out of the hoop and cut his little foo-foo head. So now in this case, before you get too hasty and try to pick out this line, this is the trimming guide. So you're going to trim right on this stitching, then you're going to tear your stabilizer out. So I'm going to do that before I rip my stitches any further. And of course, you're going to do this with a rotary cutter. So cutting right on that stitching line, I have my little seagull all ready to be pieced onto his pier. So now, the moment you've all been waiting for is to actually make his little foo-foo head a foo-foo head. So we're gonna turn this around and we're gonna cut my bobbin thread right here, just like that. And now let's turn it over and use the tip of our scissors to just pull his little fluff through. <laughs> Look at that. All right, so now we have a fluffy headed seagull and we'll make him a buddy and then cut the pier material according to the directions and our handout that you should be able to download from the link in this video. From the rest of this grunge, you're gonna cut a piece that is three and a half by five and a half three and a half by six and a half, and two and a half by four and a half. And that's the pier for your seagulls. I'm using my ruler here and I'm gonna start off with um, three and a half, just like this. And now I'm gonna take this unit and trim it down to five and a half in length. So I just cut my three and a half by six and a half. And then finally I need two and a half by four and a half. Then we're going to cut our gray and of course we've already used this for our seagulls so now we need the rest of our pieces. We need two and a half by five and a half and two and a half by four and a half. Two and a half by five and a half here and I'm cutting two at a time and I'm just going to shorten the other one down to four and a half. Just like that. So two and a half by four and a half and two and a half by five and a half. So when we sew this together, we're gonna put our seagulls on a pier. Now I cut the grunge for the pier, but like I like we noticed when we did the palm trees, I like the grunge because it's kind of double-sided. So I used the wrong side of the grunge for the middle and then the right side of the grunge for either side. I've placed my little seagulls here. And so now we're gonna sew seagull to here, this piece to this piece, this piece to the seagull, and then this to this and this to this. And you can find those instructions on page 29 of your Kimber Bell instruction pattern right here under section five. If you want to go ahead and sew your seagulls together, uh, might not be a bad idea just so that the uh, material doesn't fray out and that kind of thing, but I'm not going to do anything to it after I sew this together. It's just going to go in the bin and wait to meet its happy family later on in our sewing adventure. So there's our seagulls, our palm trees. Ooh, look at them swaying in the breeze. Ooh, there's another one. And our cotton candy. So, two palm trees, two cotton candies, and two seagulls that face each other and love each other, and some peers. And then we move on to next time. All right, so are you ready? Are you, are you ready for this project? There's lots of fluff from the foo foo headed seagulls to the faux chenille. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget that next month we're going to be making tote bags and flip flops.
that sounds exciting. So if you want to see more videos just like this one or little quick videos, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. But until then, ah, enjoy the winter on the boardwalk. See ya.